Hi, welcome to Papa Rubin's Surf Fishing Channel. Today it's rainy out, it's not great conditions for fishing. Uh, maybe a little bit later this evening and have some footage of catching fish. So uh, instead of doing that, I'm going to talk to you today, uh, give you kind of a pompano or fur fishing in general 101. Um, if you're a seasoned fur fisher, you probably may not be too interested in this content. But if you're new to fur fishing and you, you're you know, coming down to the Destin area, which is where I'm located, actually in Miramar Beach, and you have limited time and you want to get the most out of your time and do some surf fishing, um, I'm going to give you a little, some few tips on how to find fish. Um, starting off, uh, as you can see on the screen here, I do have a surf fishing charter um, guide that I only do on the weekends. If you want to book with me, you can click on book now. It'll take you to this page. You can select the day. You'll notice that the weekdays are grayed out. It's because I only do Saturday and Sunday. Click on a day. It'll give you the times. You know, my recommendation is uh, these are four-hour charters that you either do a 7 a.m. or a 3 or 4 p.m. Um, the reason being that when the beaches are crowded, and that usually starts about 10 a.m., um, you know, uh, fishing can be kind of tough, particularly in Destin and Miramar area. So either early morning or late afternoon, I'll even meet you at six if you need to, if you say seven, I'm gonna call you and we'll, we'll talk about uh, where to meet and times and all that. Um, you don't have to pay on the site. My policy is that if you don't catch fish, you don't pay me. So one of the questions I get quite often is what can you catch on the beach? Um, if you go to the gallery page on my website, you can kind of see what, what I've caught or what others have caught with me. What everybody's after right now, and this begins uh, mid-March when the water starts to warm up, when the, the magic temperature for Pompano um, are 68 degrees, but these are Pompano right here. Uh, these are Pompano and Whiting, and they run together usually. Um, my experience is that the Whiting are sometimes are preceding the Pompano. Um, I haven't seen a lot of whiting this year. It's not been a big whiting catch. I don't know why, um, but this is what everybody's after. So if you go on the beach anywhere from mid-March to the end of May uh, before the June grass gets here, you see poles lined up. This is what everybody's fishing for. We're in the middle of the pond. Um, some other things you can catch on the beach, shark. Um, I'm surprised when people are, are surprised when I land a shark. Uh, this is a, about a four-foot black nose that I caught. Uh, you can catch, we call these black drum or big uglies. And these big uglies um, get pretty good size. I think this one was probably in the 20 to 30 pound range, maybe. Um, they, get, they get pretty big. They're more of a game fish. You're not going to eat those. Uh, probably the best eating fish of all of these, some people feel, are the whitey. And in this picture... This is a normal size whiting. This is a 11, 11 half inch whiting. These pompano are 13 and 14 inches. So these whiting are a little unusual in size. I think they were 14, each about 14 inches. Uh, when you hear the length on these, when people refer to, to inches, on the pompano, they're measuring from the tip of the nose to the fork in the tail right here. And in the state of Florida, they have to be 11 inches from nose to the fork. Uh, or below 20 inches. So the spot is 11 to 20 inches. Um, if they're below 11 inches, throw them back. If they're above 20 inches, I think you can keep one a day. Um, so if you if you have six fish, one of them, and I've never seen anything over 20 inches personally, but if you happen to catch one, um, one I would get it weighed, see what the record is. I think the state or world record is 8.9 pounds, some, somewhere in that range. Um, but if you get something over 20 inches, get away before you cook it. <laughs> you know, redfish are pretty plentiful in the surf. Uh, you know, you can catch these guys. Uh, this is a 27 inch slot. He was right at slot. You can see his nice, the blooming back here in the tail. Uh, he's been eating some shrimp and that kind of gives them that blue color in their tail. Uh, beautiful fish, good eating fish. The black drum, not good eating fish. Well, let me, let me restate that. If they're 24 inches or less, um, we refer to them as puppy drum. 
and Puppy Drum are pretty good eating. They're, they're, I think they're as good as Pompano. So if you catch a smaller drum fish, uh, black drum, uh, you know, keep it clean and, and eat it. Uh, but if you catch anything, you know, in the 24 plus range, uh, you're probably going to want to just turn them back. Um, they get full of worms as they get older and just not the greatest eating. They get tough. So that's the type of fish you can catch. So the next thing that people ask me is, well, what I hear a lot of is, I've fished for the last five years when we're down here for a week and I've never caught a fish or I've just caught catfish, you know. Um, there's, there's kind of a, a pattern to the fish that you need to know about. Bar that runs in front of the beach, and this is where you see the waves breaking. So what the fish are doing, I'm going to go from east to west here, is they're swimming the back of these bars, and you'll know you'll see you know further further out. You'll have this second bar, and then you know deep blue area, but along this bar that runs the beach, these fish are going to come in, and they're going to swim this bar. And they're going to come down to this opening. So if the if there's a lot of current, if there's a lot of movement in water, the day you're out fishing, you're going to notice water coming in in waves. And then there's going to be rippled water flowing out. And that ripple water is passing through this rip right here. And it's a space between the sandbar. But what the fish are going to do is they're going to come down. They're going to come into this cut, into this rip into the trough area and they're gonna feed in this trough area. And they're gonna feed off the front of the bar right here. Cause off these points and right off the beach right here, this is where all the clams and sand fleas and mole crabs and all the things that they feed on and eat are right in here. When there's a good current, that current is gonna pull these sand fleas and mole crabs and clams off of the out of the sand and it's going to pull it out through this rip and they're going to sit out here and feed some of them we've you know whiting will feed in close pompano will feed out a little bit deeper so to give you an idea of the distance here if i set up you know when i when i come in i walk this road right here this is henderson beach in destin and I have two large carts, so I come down the trail that the uh, rangers try the SUVs down. I'm going to look here, and I'm going to look for void uh, area that's void of waves, crashing waves. Okay, well, you see the waves rolling and breaking. They're breaking on the back of this bar right here, and then they're coming across the bar, and then they're breaking again as they come in. In this area you're going to see very little waves. So you'll see waves on this side breaking. You'll see waves on this side breaking. Right in this area, you're going to see kind of not smooth water. You'll still see the flow coming in, but you won't see the white foam breaking right there. On heavier days, it breaks the entire length. It's hard to read on really, like right now, we just had a really high wind, I think 25 mile an hour gust yesterday. Um, the waves were really big. Surf was really big. There's a big southeast wind blowing in that's um, stirring up the surf. And it's hard to read on those days. When it's, the, when it's a normal or medium wave day, you can kind of see that break in the waves. And that's where you want to set up and fish. So if I'm going to set up on the beach here, I'm going to set up off this point right here. I'm going to set up one rod there. I'm going to set up, you know, maybe 20 or so yards away, another rod here. And then another 20 or so yards away, I'm going to set up a ride here. So I'm going to have three rods out. And the way I'm going to work these, this rod out here to the east, I'm going to put right on the front of the barn. And that's about 70 yards, 70 to 80 yards. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you the truth about casting here in just a minute. My middle rod, I'm going to put in this area so that as the fish swim in through this cut, my my bait's going to be sitting right there. So when they come in through this rip, I'm going to have a bait right there. And then my third rod, I'm going to walk out on this point. And this is ankle deep water. There may be a small gutter right here in front that's knee deep. And then I'm going to step up onto the bar. 
I'll be in ankle deep water. There'll be breaking waves coming in at me. But I'm gonna set up right here. And I'm actually gonna throw a cross towards this point right here of the bar. So now, now I have one shallower in, I have one even closer in, and I have one out deep. So the cast that I'm gonna make here The first cast is going to be about as far as I can throw, about 75 yards. And I'll tell you how I know that in just a minute. My second cast, I'm going to walk out a little bit onto that bar here. And I'm going to throw it right in this area. And even though that's... Um, Looks like you know it should be closer in. I'm in the water now. I'm not in deep water. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wade out to my chest, get what salt water on my reel and everything. I'm gonna stay me me to waist deep. You know, no no more than that. But I'm gonna throw it about 50 to 60 yards. And then my last cast, when I get out on this point, and I'm gonna throw to here. It's again gonna be in the 70. 70 yard range. Now the reason I know 70 yards and my max distance, 70, 75 yards, is that I stood on the beach one day, nobody else was around, and I set up a sand spike 100 yards out. And I used to do a lot of hunting. I still would, I just don't have the property to hunt on anymore. So I, I set up a spike There was 100 yards, and I had a, a range finder, and my cart was back here, and I cast it. And the first time I cast it, and I have a, a Ninja Dagger, which is a really nice 11-foot um, rod, uh, Ninja Tackle. I'll put a description. In the description, I'll put a link to Ninja Tackle. They make some really nice rods, and, and their 11-footer is one of my favorites. But I had an 11-foot rod. I had a probably a three-ounce Sputnik weight on there. I think I actually I actually used a pyramid weight because I was reeling it back in, and uh, Sputniks don't really in a good old stand. Neither neither do the pyramids, but that's what I was using. So anyway, took a three ounce weight, threw it as hard as I could, and you know I'm thinking that that was a hundred yards easy, and I get there and I'm about thirty yards shy in this area of the hundred yard mark. So I go back thinking, okay, I I must have just uh, maybe changed that one. I'll, I'll, I'll try again, threw again, as hard as I could. Maybe got it out 75 to 80 yards, but still was not at the 100 yard mark. I tried a third time, three times in a row, and landed within feet of each other at each time. I was about 75 to 80 yard mark. So that's, that's about as far as I can throw. There are guys who are saying they're throwing 100 to 150, and um, I'm not young anymore, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, uh, I'll be 59 uh, in two months. So I'm happy to be able to throw it 70 yards. It's kind of like golf. You know, you play golf with guys who hit it 300 yards. If I'm hitting it 240, I'm happy. And it's in the fairway. You know, if I'm, if I'm throwing 70 and I'm able to reach all my marks, I'm good with that. So when you set up on the beach, look for structure, okay? Look for a point like this. And on the point, there's going to be deep water on one side and shallow water on the other, 18 inches. So again, if you're coming down, the limited amount of time, find structure, go at the right time of day. Don't go where there's a lot of people swimming. Um, you know, look for the currents. Um, if you have one set up, short cast, check your bait half an hour longer cast, check your bait half an hour deep cast. You know, try to figure out where the fish are if you have multiple setups. Long, medium, short, or long, medium, go long, medium, check your bait, throw one short. Just vary it until you find fish. So good luck fishing. Uh, if you're down on the beach, I'll show you the area I'm in. And uh, you can catch me here in the mornings, particularly. So uh, that's crab trap. That's not me. There we are. So this is the Miramar Beach area. It's Pompano Joe's. Um, you know, if you 
uh, see somebody with a big electric cart, that's me. Um, and uh, it's you're gonna have to be out early or out late, one of the two, because this place gets packed. I mean, it, this is a public parking area, uh, nice restaurant here, a lot of condos in the area. Um, and this area just fills up quickly. So if you're on the beach, say hello, uh, tight lines, good luck to you.